All right, so we're getting ready to begin our water pump installation. And as you can see by looking down in here, that we got some crud, grime. Also, the colors aren't matching very well between the rest of the engine and this timing cover. So what we wanna do uh, before we go ahead and paint this to make it look better, is we wanna go ahead and uh, clean it off real good. So I'm gonna use some brake cleaner and just spray off all the water, loose dirt, debris, and things that could be causing any kind of sealing issues and just to make it look better. I'm going to pat this down with the shop rag, give it a few minutes to dry off, and then uh, spray it with some Ford Blue paint, and probably give that overnight to dry, and then sometime tomorrow or the next day, go ahead and start putting the water pump back together. See you then. All right, so we've cleaned up the area that we're going to paint. We've put some tape over the areas that we don't want to get uh, any paint on. And I've used some of the water pump bolts from the old water pump so that I don't get paint in the threads that the water pump and the backing plate mount to. So next step now is to go ahead and spray it and then I'll show you the finished project. It's now fully painted. You can see it's gonna be a nice Ford blue to match the rest of the engine. And right now it looks like a mess, but as soon as it dries and I pull all the bolts and the tape off, it's gonna look really nice. And then I'll be able to start with the uh, water pump installation. But first we're gonna battle the all, get the uh, piece out of the timing cover that's keeping me from putting my new uh, oil dipstick tube in. So more to come. All right, so what we're gonna to tackle today is gonna to be this broken off dipstick tube inside of the front cover down here. Uh, this happened during the engine swap when it was getting put back in. It got tweaked and broke off in there, and I didn't even know about it until I noticed an oil drip. Um, and it was impossible to get this piece out of there with the alternator and the water pump and everything mounted to the engine in the way of it. Um, so what I want to do is try to use uh, this guy right here, tap it in there, and then see if I can't get that thing to spin out of there. I don't want to use a drill bit or anything like that because what I don't want to do is put a whole bunch of metal shavings down in my oil pan because I just changed this oil and don't really want to change it again. The hard part was not being able to get this in there and having room to turn it with everything in the way. So what we're going to do now is attempt to do it with everything out of the way. So we look, we see that it can go in there pretty easily. and what I'm gonna do is take a hammer, gently tap. You don't wanna ever uh, hammer on these hard. Uh, most of these uh, aluminum covers or they're pot metal covers, and they can get damaged or broken very easily. Plus, I don't wanna push anything down into the oil pan if I can help it. Uh, so let's take a look and see if we can get it done with this. So we got the old one removed, the trick worked. Uh, I did have to drill out a little bit of a lip on it. Um, I don't think I got too many metal shavings down in there, but just to be safe on a rebuilt engine, I'm gonna do an oil change just in case. Uh, you're never better safe than sorry when it comes to metal shavings in your engine. Uh, so now we gotta install the other pipe tube. So you see we got the tube there, this end down there goes in that hole into the block. And we have a a uh, piece that mounts to this that uh, will mount it to the side of the uh, engine block. So let's do that. So here is the piece that's going to mount to the head or the side of the block. Uh, what I want to do is put a little bit of RTV on this guy down here at the bottom uh, because it didn't come with an O-ring and it doesn't really seat securely enough, I think, for an O-ring to help it much. So I'm just gonna put a very small coating of RTV around this area right here so that when the tube gets pushed down in there, that RTV will seal and seat around this lip right here. 
All right, so we got our RTV, we got our hold down, we're ready to install. We're gonna take the tube and we're very gently going to place it in the hole. Saw that RTV kind of squeeze up out of there when I pushed it down. So it should be nice and sealed in there. Now this piece here is going to need to mount somewhere and we're going to have to figure out where because the old dipstick tube mounted right there and this one does not seem to want to do that so maybe this thing needs to come around and go this way This is what happens when you buy an aftermarket part for 16 bucks at AutoZone. <laughs> you doesn't fit and then you end up dropping it in your coolant bucket. So bloopers right on demand. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is go ahead and mount the water pump. With the water pump mounted, we will be able to determine where the nearest place to secure this uh, dipstick tube is gonna be. And then that'll kind of give us an idea of how to secure it. So until then, uh, we'll start with the water pump and we'll come back to the dipstick once I figure out what we're going to do with it. So welcome to Real World uh, Garage Play. So right here we have our plate and our gasket. And this is what's going to go right up against the uh, front cover. Now coolant travels through these two passages right here into and out of the water pump. So what we want to do is we want to put a little bit of gasket sealer on this side up on the timing cover and then on the back side of the gasket right here on the plate. I don't need to run an RTV or a gasket sealer the entire length of this because this is the only place that needs sealed from uh, coolant leaking through it. All right, so I could put a small coat of RTV on here, but I like to use the copper coat gasket compound because it solidifies really well, but doesn't uh, flake off the way that RTV does. So when you get a can of this and you pull it out, if your little ball looks like nothing but green slime, you want to see that copper in it. So that means that you need to mix it up really well first. So we're going to do that in here by moving this around which is kind of hard to do and hold the camera at the same time uh, but once i get this mixed up then i'll put it on and show you the finished product we've got the copper gasket sealer installed on here we got some on here and we have the three bolts that go along the top piece here these bolts are short because they're just securing the top of this thing to the timing cover where the long bolts here go with those two gaskets because they have to come from the other side through the water pump, through the timing cover, all the way into the block itself. Um, so these three, uh, thread sealer, not a big deal. These four that are going to go through these two holes on each side, they're going to get some uh, thread sealant put on them. And then we will uh, do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and set it on the front cover. And then we'll show the install procedure for the water pump. So the plate is installed now with just the bolts up here in the top loose. And then you can see the holes there. I got this copper sealer on either side. You don't want to use too much of the copper sealer. If you put it too thick in there, it could block the water ports or get in your water jacket. And you do not want that to happen. So what I'm temporarily gonna do is take the four long bolts and just get them started because I wanna torque these three down, but I wanna do it with those bolts in place so that they line up still when I go to put the water pump on. So here we have the top three retaining bolts are uh, all the way in. And we got our four that we used as basically guide studs that we can go ahead and pull back out now. Now when we put the water pump on, this should line up. I say should because a lot of times I think something's going to happen and it never does. Uh, but we keep our fingers crossed on that. And on these four bolts, like I said before, we are going to want to use a 
thread sealer on these because they go into the engine and may or may not be exposed to water jackets on some engines. So uh, usually just if I don't know for sure, I use a thread sealer on it. All right, new problem. So I do not have an Allen bolt big enough to actually tighten this down. Uh, where it sits right now, I would need to, since my lower outlet's on the other side, I would need to take this plug and move it over here so that I could put the uh, tube that the radiator hose connects to on this side. There's no point in me going any further right now because this thing needs to be tightened down pretty good in here with some thread sealer so it doesn't leak on this side. And until I get the tool that will fit in there and let me do that, uh, there's no point taking it out. So I think that's where today's video is going to stop. I'm going to get the tool and then uh, we'll pick up where we left off. Have a good night.